to everyone in this video we are going to discuss about amazon redshift serverless and uh, see how to get started with redshift serverless and start using it okay so amazon redshift serverless is a data warehousing solution from aws and uh, it lets you analyze your data run analytical queries on your data build dashboards and you know connect to your uh, external bi application and a bunch of other stuff okay so it's different from traditional amazon redshift uh, cluster uh, in a way that you don't need to provision a cluster or manage it you just need to go to redshift serverless and you know create your set up your redshift serverless environment and you can start querying your data right away okay it's also different um, in the way it charges you because amazon redshift in using amazon redshift clusters you have to pay for the cluster whenever it is up and running okay with amazon redshift serverless you only have to pay for the compute capacity that you use whenever you run a query okay so that's the major difference between uh, redshift provision cluster and uh, redshift serverless there are also a bunch of other differences which we will see down the line okay so for now let's uh, you know go to amazon redshift and see how to use uh, start using redshift serverless okay so i'm going to click on redshift here if you don't find it here you can just search for redshift and go to amazon redshift console okay so if you have not used a redshift before this is how the console looks like and uh, so i'm going to select click on this try redshift serverless free trial so you will also get a uh, 300 dollar credit to use uh, if you are using it for the first time right so okay i'm going to click on this one and uh, so this takes to a page where we can create our first uh, redshift serverless environment okay so to start setting up i'm going to use uh, for this demo i'm just going to use all the default settings so i'm not going to modify much okay so i'm going to select use default settings okay namespace namespace is basically um it's like a collection of your all your schemas tables and you know whatever right so whenever you create a schema or a table it goes under a particular namespace okay we'll learn more about that uh, down the line okay so let's leave all the settings as default and scroll down here if you see for permission it's saying that we need to associate an IAM role so that like, I mean, uh, Redshift serverless can run queries on your behalf, right? So it needs to have certain permissions. Like, for example, if you are trying to query data from uh, Amazon S3, it needs to have uh, the permissions to fetch data from S3 and uh, you know, or also permissions for CloudWatch logs and uh, stuff like that. Okay, so let's, I mean, create an IAM role and associate it, associate that uh, IAM role with this uh, serverless. Okay, so let's click on manage IAM roles here and click on create IAM role. And here, if you see, uh, like, I mean, you can specify the S3 bucket uh, which this IAM role will have access to. Okay, you can, like, just click on the no additional S3 bucket, uh, which will not have any uh, access to additional S3 buckets. Okay, so if you want any S3 bucket, you can select this. So when I select this, this IAM role that is going to get created now will have access to all the S3 buckets in my account. Okay, uh, for now, let's just click no additional S3 bucket. Or if you have, you know, need to give access to certain specific S3 buckets, you can select this. For now, let's just select this no additional S3 bucket. And down the line, we will see how to uh, give permissions. Like, I mean, create a new role and associate with the uh, serverless, which has permissions to a particular S3 bucket. Okay. For now, let's just select this and create an IAM role as default. Okay. So this IAM role is now created and this will be set as a default IAM role for this uh, serverless okay so if you see here uh, the role type is default okay and rest everything i'm going to leave it as it is so if you see this this is a base capacity so base capacity is 128 so base capacity is measured in terms of rpus which is redshift processing units um, so i'm going to talk about more about that i mean uh, in my coming videos so for now let's leave it as default 128 uh, base capacitors okay and click on save configuration here so if you see it says it may take a few minutes to complete after completing the setup you can work with your data so that's it that's all you need to do you just need to click on i mean uh, try redshift serverless and just set up it set it up it just takes a couple of minutes and you are ready to go and start querying your data. So let's wait for this to complete and then we'll see how to start querying the data using serverless. Okay, uh, it says that the setup is now complete. Let me click on continue. Okay, so if you see here now, uh, default namespace is created. So let me click on that 
default namespace okay so this is our namespace so let me click on query data here so if you see this is our serverless default work group okay so if you just click on this okay for now i'm going to connect using temporary credentials so just click on federated user and click on create connection here so if you see here it got like i mean we got, got connected to our serverless now so it's just it's that simple so we can start querying the data using this now so if you click on the sample data dev there are some sample data sets for you to start playing around with the data okay so let me just start in this okay so we are just creating a sample database and schema okay it says that ticket data is loaded successfully so if you see you can now uh, see the tables under this you can start querying the tables so if i just right click on this and click on select table so you get the query here and if i hit run just runs the query and shows the data in that category table okay so uh, this is a very you know this is a sample database that aws has provided us to you know start you know familiarizing ourselves with the ui and uh, explore how to query the tables and get familiarized with the query editor and stuff like that okay so you can also like i mean load your data to redshift serverless using like i mean from s3 or whatever like from your files and you can also create tables from external uh, external tables etc so so all those things we are going to be doing uh, in the upcoming videos so this was just an you know demo video uh, on showing you how to get started with redshift serverless and uh, it was a short intro I, and i hope you found it helpful in the next video, we're going to see how to uh, load data to Redshift serverless and start querying the data. Okay, thank you.